Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and here is the mid year book freakout tag. I have done this tag for every single year I've been on BookTube, so I'll link my previous ones down below. In case you're curious, this is gonna be my seventh one. <laughs> I have a bunch of questions here for the mid-year book freak out tag, so let's let's get into them. I can't believe we're already halfway through the year. Let's not talk about it, okay? I believe I've read around 90 books so far this year, which is a little bit low for me, but that's okay, okay? That's fine. I'm not gonna hurt myself about it, okay? Question number one is best book you've read so far in 2024. I could not pick just one, okay? I have three because I can't pick one. Um, Whispers of the Deep by Emma Ham was probably my first five-star read of the year. I absolutely love it. This is her special edition that she came out with. It's absolutely, let me open it, absolutely stunning. I love it. Um, and I need to purchase book number two because I absolutely love that one also. Um, this is a mermaid dark monster fantasy romance um, where he is this mermaid creature and he ends up kidnapping our heroine and their people are like at war. There's a language barrier. Like it is so good. I love it. Book number two is fantastic as well. I've read book number two. I also have The Friendship Study by Ruby Barrett. This is a friend still lovers romance. These two characters actually get set up on a blind date by a mutual friend. And the date doesn't really go very well. Both of them aren't really in the right place to date at all, but they don't think that they'll ever see each other again, but then they do <laughs> um, when they both agree to be a part of this friendship study at the local university college. And um, there's a strict rule in this study. You cannot fall in love or get with the other people in the study because the whole study is about how adults form like adult friendships, like how do adults form friendships. The more time these two spend together, the more they fall for each other. And um, it's obviously forbidden, but I love this one great representation like it's so good and then i also loved forget me not by julie soto this one was so good it's a second chance romance between a florist and a wedding planner and the flashback scenes are all in like the hero's point of view when they first fell in love and then the heroine's point of view are all the present day chapters when like they don't really talk anymore but they're for forced to work together to work on a wedding and um it's so good like i love this one i cannot wait for her next book to come out in just a little bit. Question number two is best sequel you've read so far in 2024. I have to give this one to Ruling Sick Thand by Victoria Abilene. It's so good. It's the latest book in her Clickanian series, which is an alien romance series. And this one, oh my gosh, Sick Thand can get it any day of the week with me, okay? Like, I love him. He ends up kidnapping our heroine, a Musa human woman, kind of like watching over her with like a two way mirror in her room and like basically watching her all the time. And he's the king to his people and he's forced to like get in a arranged marriage with her too. It's like, I can't really describe it, but it's it's so good. And the hero like rides these like alien creatures that are kind of like dragons. So he's kind of like a dragon rider on top of that. He's covered in tattoos. Like, I love this man. I love this man. It's a great sequel. I love it. More people need to read the series to get to this book. Number three is a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. I'm giving this one to Bound by the Shadow Prince by Ruby Dixon. This one came out in June and um, I'm actually, whoa, sorry, book plate just fell out. I got this one like with a signature and everything. I'm actually meeting her probably after this video comes out, so I cannot wait for that. But this is her fantasy romance release that was on I think like on yonder and now she published it into like a full length like actual physical book and I'm kind of waiting for my Libby to get the audiobook it's like 25 hours long though so who knows I might just pick this up just Ruby's audiobook slap so hard so I need to get to this one we have like a here's a picture of our hero like a gargoyle creature man and our heroine love that I cannot wait to read this one. I just, I need to sit down and do it. Question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have three. I couldn't pick just one. First is um, Magical Meet Cute by Jean Meltzer. Jean Meltzer wrote um, Kissing Kosher, which was one of my favorite books of last year. I loved it so much. I read it at the end of the year, I want to say. So good. Great chronic illness representation. And I feel like that's going to happen in this book as well. It doesn't come out, I think, till September though. Next is The Wraith King by Juliet Cross. I've never read a Juliet Cross book, but this cover, huh, this cover just like roped me in. Another book that comes out like later in the year, so like September or October, I want to say. And then also I have to give it to Echoes of the Tide by Emma Hamm, the third book in her Hidden Waters series, so like that Merman series I talked about first. There's the third book coming out. So 
I need it. I need it. Next question is biggest surprise. I have to give this one to Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. I haven't read a lot of dark romances recently. I love listening to them on audio, but a lot of dark romances like don't come out on audio. And the ones that are on audio are like really hyped ones. That, like I don't feel like reading. I'm talking about you haunting Adeline. I don't feel like reading about a gun going somewhere. I just, I don't. <laughs> um, so um, I finally got the audiobook on Libby. The hold was forever. And I was actually pleasantly surprised. I actually was like addicted to this. I could not put it down. It's about like this heroine who gets roped into these like four guys on Devil's Night, like Halloween. And uh, years ago when she was in high school, she actually joined them for a Devil's Night and they went to jail. And they all think that she's responsible for her, for them going to jail. And it's years later that they've been out of jail and they want revenge on our heroine. It's pretty dark. I'm actually about to read the last book in the series. So I would say this whole series is like a pleasant surprise for me that I'm actually really enjoying. Next, we are going to talk about your favorite new author. This one I have to give to Anne Gracie. I've read like, I want to say like eight of her books <laughs> so far this year. She's a historical romance author. I found her on my Libby and I think I started with The Autumn Bride and I just cannot put her down. She writes fantastic familiar relationships as well as like the found family trope. It's so good. I've completed one whole series by her. I've started another one. No, I've started two other or three other ones. I don't know. Like I'm just all over the place with her books, but they're actually really fun. And I do love historical romances where we're not just focused on the couple. Like that's what I think what I prefer is I like the side characters, getting glimpses of them and their possible romance stories. So I, I really love her books. I've read a lot of them. She's probably the author that I've read the most from this year so far. Next is newest fictional crush. I have two. So Jesse from The Friendship Study. I absolutely love him. I love a man who is emotionally mature. Okay, love him. And then also I can't remember his name for the life of me, but the hero from Ready or Not by Cara Bastone. He ends up finding out that like the woman he's been crushing hardcore on for years since he was a teenager gets pregnant by another man and is like, huh, we're gonna do this. Like I'm gonna help you every way possible. And um, he just means everything. He is so sweet and caring and is gonna do everything everything in the world to make this woman happy and make sure her baby has everything he needs. Like, yes. Newest favorite character. Um, I have two. I have Dolora from A Soda Heel. Our heroine in this book, Dolora, is going through a lot of depression in this book, like a lot. This is a monster romance, by the way. And I just loved reading about her journey to loving herself because at the beginning of this book, she literally is like, I don't care if I die. And by the end of the book, she has found love, has a family and is full on like living and loving herself. And I loved seeing that growth. And then I also loved Una from The Town Alpha's Rejected Mate by Casey Wells. She ends up finding out that her faded mate like rejected her like publicly in front of everybody. And she's this badass who tells this witch like, just remove it then. If he doesn't want to be with me, like, I don't want to feel anything for him. And then he realizes he messed up and goes crawling on his hands and knees to like get her back because he realized he messed up. And I'm just like, oh, no, that is not enough. If you want to be with me, you got to show me you want to be with me. And who? I love her. And she also deals with a lot of chronic pain. She was injured when she was a child. And I think she walks with a limp and she has a bunch of scar tissue on her leg. And um, she is so strong. Like, she is so strong. Strong woman, though. She reminds me somewhat of um, Yvonne from... A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane, which is another amazing heroine. I think she, I picked her for another favorite character in a different mid-year book freak out tag in a previous year. So. What is a book that made you cry? Um, let's do this one. This is probably the only one. I haven't cried a lot this year in books, honestly. I've cried for many other reasons, but we're not gonna go into that. Um, let's do House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Mass. This one was a hunky doozy, obviously. It's ginormous. I read this book earlier this year, like right when it dropped, and a lot goes like goes on in this one. It's the third book in her Crescent City series. Um, and a lot goes down in here. Just saying. So just, I can't say anything else. It's the third book in the series. I cannot. A book that made me happy is Don't Want You Like a Best Friend. This one is so fun. Our two heroines in this book, it's a sapphic historical, by the way. Um, one of them is debut, like new to society. And the other one has been out for a few years. Anyway, they end up figuring out that their parents know each other and have these like longing, but kind of like hate filled looks at each other. And they end up realizing that their parents actually courted each other when they first came out to society. So they decide to kind of like do like a parent trap, set their parents up together. But while they're doing that, they actually also fall in love with each other at the same time. It's so cute and hot. Like I love a friends to lovers. And this one is like the epitome 
of a fantastic friends to lovers. I just had a smile on my face the entire time I was listening to this book. Most beautiful book you bought for the year so far or received. I have two to show off and they're both Ruby Dixon books, okay? Um, first is the exclusive edition from Era Books of Ice Planet Barbarians. It is absolutely stunning with like the painted pages here and then the end pages and like it's just beautiful it is absolutely like stunning i love it it's hardback i i love it um and then another ruby one is one i got recently this is the book bands exclusive edition of fire and his blood my lovely friend rachel i love rachel I'll link her down below she actually was a doll and picked up my pre-order for me and sent it my way because i did not get a ticket to book bonanza um so i just i this is the only book that i pre-ordered and had someone pick up and send to me so thank you so much it's actually i want to show it off for a second it has this it actually has two dust jackets so this is the one i just showed you and then doo -doo 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 -doo, there is this one which is absolutely beautiful as well stunning and then this is the book naked if you didn't know fire and his blood is the first book in her post-apocalyptic um dragon shifter series there's this step back here and it is also signed so i love this series this, this book this series it's so fun like dragon shifter romance yes and i love how she picked like um a different series to do an exclusive exclusive edition for because you get a lot of ipb stuff so i love how i have like a new book for my ruby shelf collection next is favorite review written i always change this to like favorite video that you've done i love my um taylor swift vlog even though like no one's watched it i actually read a few books i think three or four books that um had taylor swift inspired titles so like don't want you like a best friend was on that um and a few other books i think one was champagne problems and i read like two more it was so fun like i love taylor swift and I love romance books, so I combine them, and that video was really fun to film, so. Favorite book to movie adaptation from 2024? Okay, obviously there's Bridgerton that came out. I liked it, I wasn't like in love with it, but it was really fun. Nonetheless, I will be rewatching it. Like, it's a great like ambiance show that I have on in the background. I've rewatched it a lot of times just in the background, okay? So there was that that came out. I've rewatched Red, Wine, Royal Blue like a lot. I don't like the book, like I don't. I actually gave my book to a friend, like I don't like the book. I, I did not, but the movie, oh, I can rewatch that movie all the time it's so good so um i've rewatched that a lot but i know that came out last year so yeah and my last question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year i picked three books for my physical tbr there are so many books i need to read by the end of the year obviously um but i picked three books off my physical tbr that i'm hoping to knock off my physical tbr by the end of the year so first one surviving scar by ruby dixon i'm really hoping the audiobook comes out for this on my libby this is her next book in the um ice planet clones series which is the second spinoff to ice planet barbarians the second spinoff series um and she just announced book number three and like the cover and it's beautiful so i just i need to get caught up and read book number two i don't even know what it's about oh i just realized look step back back I love how she's doing that, like having the couple in the step back back. Um, and then also The Prospects by KT Hoffman. This is a baseball romance where two players fall in love with each other. Yes, yes, please. And then I finally want to read Lessons in Corruption by Jonah Darling. I've read Welcome to the Dark Side. Okay, I've read that. Um, and that's book number two. So I, I wanna go back to book number one. This is the first book in a motorcycle club romance series. And I think it's Age Gap where the heroine is older and she's like his teacher i want to say so sense forbidden and angsty can't wait to pick this up so there you have it that is the mid-year book freakout tag let me know what your answers would be to these and if you have a mid-year book freakout tag on your channel let me know like i want to go check it out i want to go watch everyone's favorites halfway through the year okay let me know also if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a leaf emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.